What's going on guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today we're going to be breaking down the week two matchup between the New York Guardians and the DC Defenders. Going over all those fantasy football start sets for you guys, giving a game preview. But hey, if you guys are looking for XFL content posted daily, click that like and subscribe button. We'll be posting stuff throughout the season. Anyway, not going to waste any time. Let's get started right now. All right. So as I said, we are going through the uh, New York Guardians DC Defenders. I'm very excited for this game. Um, I, I think it's pretty amazing how all of the week two games have uh, fallen after uh, the way everything broke down in week one. So I think we're gonna get a lot more questions answered. Honestly, I feel like I'm more excited for week two than I was in week one. Um, and I think that this game is a great way to kick things off. So let's look at the Guardians here. Now, before we get into the uh, players, uh, let's go over the over-under right now is 47 and a half. Uh, we saw all of the over-unders kind of dip down a little bit from last week, even though I think on average, uh, only about 30 points were scored uh, just because we had two games where um, the under was hit severely. Last week, three games hit the under, one game hit the over. So um, look for uh, the unders to start creeping uh, lower, but then at the same point, as these offenses get uh, more playing time, they start gelling with one another, the actual scoring should go up because that was kind of the design of this league. So it's going to be kind of an interesting dynamic to pay attention to. But right now, 47.5 and the defenders are actually favored by 6.5 points, so that puts the implied point total around 27 to 20. All right, so as I said, let's look at the Guardians first since they are their away team, beginning with Matt McGloin. He looked really good last week. Um, he didn't really make many crucial mistakes, but definitely has some improvement with his deep ball accuracy uh, that leaves some room to be desired. But now he gets to play a real test here against the defenders, uh, who were really the only other truly impressive defense from week one, uh, you know, uh, opposite to the Guardians. This game, I think, will say a lot about both the defenders' defense and McGloin, uh, you know, just by nature of how this game turns out. I'm actually expecting this game to hit the under. I think this will be a lower scoring affair, and uh, I think that McGloin will have a decent game. Definitely would still start him in fantasy, but I'm not expecting a uh, you know tremendous blowout here. All right, looking at the running backs, last week Tim Cook barely did anything outside of bowling through for two one-point conversions, while Darius Victor ended up getting a majority of the work on the ground as the pass catcher, but still, I'm not excited to start Darius Victor this week because he'll likely lack any real goal line opportunities, and it's seeming like a, uh, you know, a running back without goal line potential in this league is probably not a running back that you're going to want to start on a regular basis. So I'm pretty much shying away from all the running backs in New York this week. Justin Stockton didn't even see any touches in week one, so you can't really start him either. Um, yeah, just trying to avoid all the New York running backs this week. Okay, on the wide receiver side, Mikael McKay looked really good in week one. Uh, while the defenders are good defensively and in the secondary, they did allow Austin Prohl to have a great stat day last week. Um, Colby Pearson will also look to continue his production here. And we also want to note that last week, Joe Horn did receive eight targets, only two receptions, but Austin Duke has surpassed him on the depth chart. So definitely not starting Joe Horn this week. Um, I probably wouldn't start Austin Duke either. I'm really just looking at McKay and Pearson here. Um, I think this should end up being more of a defensive battle, as I've mentioned. So I do think that McKay and Pearson will get enough targets to have a good enough fantasy data to warrant starting, but not going to dip into the third option and beyond. All right, tight ends. Uh, the only tight end on this team last week with any targets was Jake Powell, and that he had six targets, which was very high for a tight end in week one across the XFL. Um, he didn't do much with those targets, but I'll take the volume anytime a tight end is getting volume with a league that barely has any good tight ends. Uh, I will definitely start uh, Jake Powell. All right, and then looking at the defense, um, you probably don't have a better, better option on waivers uh, since there are only eight teams, and although I regard New York as the best defense in the league, it'll be tough to uh, expect them to have the exact same output that they had last week against Tampa Bay since they're going up Cardell Jones and the defenders this week in DC but I think they will perform well enough uh, through sacks um, points allowed and possibly be able to force a turnover in this game to remain in the top half I have them ranked as number three so you're probably starting them 
All right, let's jump over to the home team to the DC Defenders. Now, last week, Cardell Jones was the number one graded passer per Pro Football Focus and continues to maintain his undefeated record as a starter through college and into the pros. Now, while it's hard to see a world where you bench Cardell Jones, I would be remiss to leave out how well New York's defense looked on both the D-line and the secondary last week. This will be a much tougher battle for Cardale than Seattle was in week one. Again, much like we said with McLoin, this is a true test to see how good these teams really are on offense. Jumping over to the running backs, Sorrell Presley forced five missed tackles last week, and although he was held to only 31 yards, he looked really impressive on the runs where he was actually able to break free and not get hit behind the line of scrimmage. Further, his only real competition for snaps is Danelle Pumphrey, um, who looked a lot slower than the last time that we saw him in the NFL, and I guess you could potentially say the uh, quarterbacks here with Cardell Jones and Tyree Jackson getting a few snaps definitely take some of that volume away, but again, this is a two-headed committee instead of a three-headed committee, which is what we're seeing from most teams across the league, so definitely something to note there. I think Presley should have a nice rebound this week, uh, even though the Guardians only gave up three points last week, you, uh, you know, it would be a bad thing to ignore the fact that they gave up 150 yards on the ground in week one to the Vipers, and I think that Jarrell Presley will have a much better stat line this week than he did in week one. I think you can start him with confidence. All right, let's jump to the receivers. Now, last week we saw Eli Rogers was wide open on basically almost every target uh, that he received last week, and he looks to be Cardo Jones' favorite target to go to. But let's not forget the main big play guy here in Rashad Ross. While New York was definitely a bend but don't break defense last week, they still gave up 268 passing yards in total, including 123 to Daniel Williams, who plays a similar role to Rashad Ross. I think Rashad Ross should be the leading wide receiver here in DC this week, but Rodgers is also a great start. They're definitely both wide receiver one caliber guys this week. Behind them is where it gets a bit more murky. Now last week DeAndre Tompkins missed because of a foot injury but he's a full participant today and it looks to be good to go this week. Um, and he played really well in the offseason so I think he'll get his fair share of snaps. But he'll also uh, be playing alongside Simi Cobbs and Malachi Dupree. So there's getting to be you know quite a bit of uh, malice to feed in this offense for uh, lack of a better word. Sorry for that cliche but Overall, I in this game that I'm expecting to hit the under and there be a little bit more defensive play here. I would play Rodgers and Ross and I would probably try to just wait and see on the rest of the pass catchers here. And then jumping over to the tight ends, Kari Lee was sidelined earlier in the week due to an injury but was a full participant. Should be good to go. Lee showed us uh, last week what he's capable of and how athletic he can be. So you can't really bench him unless you have a great option ahead of him. Uh, so I still have him in my uh, tier of starting potential tight ends. All right, jumping to the defense. The number one scoring fantasy defense on week one will look to keep this thing rolling at home versus New York. Now, Matt McLean is not known for throwing a lot of picks or making a lot of pivotal mistakes, but he was up and down last week and should prove to provide some opportunities for the defenders to strike. I think this game hits the under, as I mentioned, so I, I'm good with starting both defenses here. I think I have the defenders ranked out number two on the week. So overall, um, I... I side with uh, Vegas on this one. I think the defenders will win this one, but I think it will be a bit closer. This could actually be a really uh, close ending game, even though um, some of the games are pretty competitive. Last week, we didn't have too many games that came down to the wire. The closest game was the Battlehawks and Renegades with a six point differential. I wouldn't be surprised if this one was even a bit closer than that, but I do like the defenders to win this one, but uh, overall hit the under on the point total 47 and a half. So, uh, that pretty much does it for this preview. I hope you guys are excited for this week. Uh, if you guys are looking for rankings, trade advice, waiver advice, everything that you need to maintain a fantasy team throughout the XFL, click that link in the description or go to fantasyaddictionnetwork.com. You can access all those for free throughout the season. And again, if you guys are looking for XFL content posted daily, hit that like and subscribe button and you'll be subscribed to everything that we're posting throughout the rest of the season. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.